Okay, let's fix something from last video. Here, amount deposit. The amount deposit is not an input field, so it shouldn't be green. So go back to the first cell OOD conditional formatting. Move to the end column. Only need this. Remove the green here. Control one. Inside format fill. Make it white for the deposit amount equals if withdraw amount is a dash comma return dash otherwise equal the withdrawal amount. Okay, then you'll see this. Now we move on to payment here. Go to cell C5, shift and press the arrow key to highlight these cells. Control T, create table. Take my table has headers. Just click somewhere inside and then table design. I'll pick orange. Let me see. Dark orange. Okay. Just like before, the first cell is ref. Usually I just go back to fund transfer. Control C, copy the first cell reference. Back to payment, go up the reference here. Control V. Then Control C and highlight everything and then Control V. You see NA rate. It returns a description whenever I type. Payment date. All right. Let me show you in Chinese. It shows Jap. Doesn't matter. After that, here comes invoice number. And then withdrawal bank. Vendor reference and then vendor name. Invoice amount. And then you pay right away. First settle and then balance due before. And then payment amount. Pay amount. And then balance due after. Get rid of the extras. Right click delete. Now I just leave the ref untouched. We'll deal with that when we make journal entries. The first must enter item is invoice number. Control one, make it green. Under invoice number, there's a drop box where the source is. Let's go back to vendor invoice. Here we just got two invoices. That's something. What's today's date? Invoice amount 112. Ignore the tax amount, or you can set a fixed formula for that. Here, I just manually type it out 224, 336, whatever, just assume $12 tax. We can also skip the net amount. Alt O D. Look for column K. Go to K. We did it before, so we just need from G to J. We can calculate that equal invoice amount minus tax amount. Let's say we paid off the first invoice 112, $112 full payment, and only paid $20 for the second invoice. $30, $40, okay, and whatever. All right, go back to payments so we can settle the vendor invoice. So we have to select invoice number not equal to when this column is a dash. So equal F6. The first cell F4, remember to lock it. Okay, oops. And then colon, then index. Select the whole column invoice number and then count, count if. This column, range, invoice number, comma, criteria is double quote, not equal, dash, double quote. It should work this time. Copy that. Control F3 and then edit the select invoice number. Make a select vendor invoice here. Select vendor invoice because we made something wrong before. Get rid of them. Delete equal control v to paste the formula we just did 
and then ODL. Just click somewhere and then I list source and then F3. Select vendor invoice here. See if we can select. Okay. Can I select? It's up to you whether you want to keep these formulas. Usually I'll delete after I finish everything. Control Z this cell and go back to payment. Invoice number here, right click, pay special validation. The selection should be available. OK, Control C, Shift and down arrow and Control V. The Dropbox should be available. Just do it somewhere, 4321. Because one invoice can be settled many times until it's fully settled. OK, for payment date, OOD, conditional formatting. Input date once we select the invoice to settle. New rule, use a formula and click this format. Usually pick the first cell of column E where invoice num has been filled in. You see E6 is locked. We only lock the column letter but not the row number. Since our invoice is set to be 100 something, so it must be greater than zero. Greater than zero. Whenever there is number, we need to format. Fill in with green. And then applies to, click it, and then click payment, shift and down arrow. Select the whole column and hit apply. Withdrawal bank should be the same. Go to first cell, F6, Alt, OD. Click applies to. We've selected right here, comma, and select this one. Apply, done. For vendor reference, vendor invoice amount first settle all these are based on the invoice number that we select. For settlement, so they are all white. Balance due and also payment are also depending on the select invoice. Alt OD conditional formatting and it applies to comma and then select the column L. Ah, uh, we can reuse the payment date from vendor invoice. Invoice date, mm, this should be the same. Select E6, Control C. Go back to payment, payment date here, E6. Right click, pay special, validation. <laughs> For withdrawal bank, we simply copy from fund transfer. Withdrawal bank column, OK. The first cell E6, Control C, go back to payment, right click, pay special, validation. Select the payment bank, Control C, Shift and down arrow, right click, pay special, validation. Here I'm not going to input too much. Just make sure the formula works for vendor reference equals index to point to the expense tab, which is vendor invoice to look up for the vendor name. Remember, shift and down arrow again and again until you select all the vendor names. Comma, usually I all enter to jump to the next row and then match back to payment, match with invoice number, comma, and then look up from the expense tab. The whole invoice column, the purple area, comma, type equals zero, exact match. Close the bracket, Alt Enter, close this one as well. So you see invoice 1004 is from vendor A. 1001 is also vendor A, see if it's correct. Expense 1001, vendor A. Invoice 1004 is also vendor A. Invoice 1003 is vendor C. Okay, get back to payment. I don't want NA here, so go back here in front of index. Shift and down arrow. Control X, cut the formula first, and then if error. See the bracket? After value, Control V, paste it back. Comma, if error. When a formula here returns error, then double quote and then dash, close the bracket. Oops. Control V, oops. Missing the index like this. B 
basically vendor name is similar. Control C, Control V, oops, this one should be vendor wrap instead of vendor name. Vendor name here is fine, but vendor wrap isn't. So use find to locate the vertical bar, comma within within vendor name, close the bracket, and you see the location free. Usually I just shift and control X, cut that, and then left bracket of vendor name and the character is free, close the bracket. I don't want a dash here, so go back to find and then control X minus one. Then you see one, two, three, four in D. I select this whole thing, control X, cut it, and value of this one. So you see one, two, three, four here. So to get rid of the error, simply shift N, control X, and then add if error, and then control V, paste it back, comma, or enter. If it returns error, display a dash instead. Okay. Invoice amount, control C, instead of name, I look for invoice amount, and you see some, some duplicates. Invoice 103 is duplicate. I do it on purpose, and now for settle, just copy from invoice amount, control C, control V, change the invoice amount to first settle. All these are looked up using the invoice number. It's pretty simple as we just need to change the item after invoice number. Balance deal is a bit complicated. It's invoice minus settle amount and then minus the accumulate payment amount for that particular invoice. Let's pick invoice 103, type it out first. Equal invoice amount minus first settle amount and minus some if. I can't simply click the target column. I have to type E6, F4, lock the first cell, colon, E6. We don't lock the second E6 and let it roll down to get E7, E8, something like that. This is the range. Criteria equals the invoice number column. Here you see the add sign, comma, some range to return the sum of this column. L6, F4, colon, L6. Square bracket, imagine the invoice amount minus first settle and minus the accumulate payments. Then it becomes the balance due after, but not balance due before, so we need to add back the current payment. It's a bit hard to understand. Let's do it first. Oops. Add back payment. Okay, let's take a look at invoice 103. It appears twice, that means it's paid twice. $30 were paid for the first day, invoice amount 336 settled $30. The residual amount should be 306. Let's say if we pay $100. After that, 100 bucks before we pay next time. The balance due before the next payment is 306 minus 100 equals $206, right? Alright, control X, cut this part if error, control V, comma, or enter. I don't want to see value in case of error. So I make it return dash, which looks better. For balance due after, simply tick balance due before the current payment, minus current payment to return the balance due after. Alright, just like before, go back to balance due after. Shift and Control X, cut it out, and if error, Control V, comma, or enter, and it will look like this. Let's say we settle that 408 in full and $100 for that 204. The first invoice is fully settled, so don't need to enter. Theoretically, if I type 100 here, it will be negative, which we shouldn't see a negative, right? You may set validation here. Basically, it's done, and I'll leave the validation to you.